Imagine writing a book that becomes so successful, it sells millions of copies in millions of countries. And in one of those countries, it's number one in the bestseller list for over a year. And then imagine that you decide to write a sequel. And the thread that greets this news on Goodreads features awe, excitement, anxiety. That's what happened to Jojo Moyes when she decided to write a follow-up to her smash hit superseller, Me Before You. After You, the story of what happened to Lou Clark after Will Trainer is published today. Please welcome the brilliant Jojo Moyes. Did you decide to revisit Lou and Will? Um, it was lots of things, really. Uh, firstly, as um, Sam knows, being a writer herself, when you finish a book, usually you have a kind of edit process in which you fall totally out of love with your characters and start to hate the whole book. Um, <laughs> and then you move on to the next thing. And because of this strange, um, overwhelming response from readers to Lou, Every day I've been answering emails and tweets and Facebook messages about her life and what she meant to people. And, and so she never really went away. She never had that chance to disappear. And then I got asked to write the screenplay for the movie. And again, um, it meant that every day I was asking myself the question, well, what would Lou do now? And, and what, what should she do? And, and finally, I let myself ask myself the same question and woke up kind of 5.30 one morning and thought, oh, hang on, what if that happened? I'm not going to tell you what that is, because hopefully you haven't read the book yet. Yeah. You're very quick readers, if you already have. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Me Before You is, is one of those books. It's become a book which is a phenomenon. Uh, how does it feel when a book really stops being yours in that way? Uh, bloody marvellous. Yeah, I just, I'm not going to lie. You know, I wrote eight books that sold next to nothing before Me Before You came along. And... Um, it is weird, because I don't think I felt that way about it until about two years in. And then a friend of mine said to me, you've written one of those books. And as soon as he said that, I kind of understood what those books were. And, and yeah, it, it's the only book that you know, people talk to me about. It's, it's one of those things where finally you meet somebody at a party and they ask you what you do and you say, oh, I write books. And they say, oh, would I have heard of you? And I go, oh, no, no, I wrote a book called Me Before You. And they go, oh. Oh, I love that book, or my mum loved that book, or my grandma loved that book, or yeah. Um, and I still haven't seen anybody reading it in public though, Everybody which is so has. annoying because yeah. you know, I do want to be that very uncool person and go, Are you enjoying it? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're also the only person in London who hasn't seen a tube poster for After You today. After You feels in, in many ways quite a bit darker than me before you. I mean, it's got, it has, you know, Lou has. Fair amount of sex. Bit of sex. Yeah, she has a bit of sex. A bit yeah. of sex. There's some. No spoilers. I'm sorry. I had to give her some sex. She yeah, a whole book without any. Lou yeah. needed a break. It's it's quite good sex, I've got to say. And what since we're on the sex? Yeah. How do you find writing sex scenes? I hate writing sex Just, scenes. It's so hard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You did it's, that to yourself. I'm I did sorry. that to myself. I realised as soon as I said it. Um, it's really <laughs> difficult. It's really difficult because you either sound like sub Barbara Cartland, you know, full of thrusting manhoods, or you say penis. Or like Morrissey. Unlike, well, or, what, what was that? Uh, I'm not quoting Morrissey on film. A bulbous salutation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, 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 I was not going to go the route of the bulbous salutation. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, so, Sorry, Sorry this is pre water I'm ahead of you. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, can I say penis? Yeah, if totally, I just did. Yeah, okay, yeah. so but if you actually, We're all adults here, yeah. if you say penis, immediately you, you kind of snigger as a reader. You're like, <laughs> she said penis, and it just completely interrupts the flow of the narrative. So it's really hard to do it in a way that doesn't either make people feel it's a biology textbook or kind of take them out of the story. And very few writers do it well. I think Marion yeah. Keys does it really well. Yeah. Um, and I read a book by Sarah Manning, who I also think wrote a really good sexy sex scene. But I think it's one of those things that's m much harder than you think. Uh, <laughs> it's really difficult. It's difficult. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like this is every book I get a tiny bit sexier. Um, well, not me, but the book <laughs> gets a bit sexier. <laughs> I get sexier. Um, yeah, I'm like Jackie Collins. You know. yeah, um, no. But uh, I just, yeah, it, I'm trying. But the other problem is if you live in a small town is that everybody assumes that whatever you write about sex is something you've just done. 
So, yeah. you know, it's you get the, uh, you the school yeah. round, you know, the school mum pick up where everyone kind of is. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, which explains why yeah. there's no sex at all in me before you. <laughs> so, as, as well as Lou having some quite nice sex yeah. in After You, there's drugs and, I mean, revenge porn, for want of a better way of putting yeah. it, really. Was it, was it an intentional move to make After You just bit darker? Um, it, no, I didn't sort of set out to write a darker book and I did try and alleviate some of the darker bits with humour but the more I thought about it I thought you have to be kind of true to your characters and I didn't believe that Lou would be able to walk away from that situation unscathed. I thought even if she did disappear to Paris initially with a kind of sense of excitement I think if you were with somebody you loved when they ended their life deliberately it would be a kind of phenomenally difficult thing to get over because also Lou is a sensitive character she's not someone who breezes through life anyway so the idea that she would somehow just move on and thanks Will you know um, the more I thought about it, it just seemed unlikely and so I felt that she had to go through her own process to 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 actually accept Will's legacy and move on but it, it was not going to be a straightforward process and required other people in the mix yeah at one point in the book, Lou finds herself um, taking responsibility for a teenager. Uh, those scenes, scenes between Lou and Lily, are some of, I think they're some of the most moving in the book, and they're really written with feeling. Tell me a bit about that character, if you can, without being too specific. Okay. Um, Lily is one of these teenagers that you think you understand what's going on on the outside, and like a lot of my characters, what I like to do is make you think you understand what's going on and then pull the carpet away a bit later on and let you see what's going on underneath. And um, she was really energising to write because whereas Lou carries this burden <coughs> and is sort of had internalised what had happened to her at the beginning of the book, um, Lily just turns everything outward. Uh, mm. and, and she was really good fun to write because she behaves completely badly and she's sort of the teenager that I never was quite brave enough to be. Um, and it, it was, it's very odd. Sometimes you write something and your book suddenly is energised and swept along and, and every scene that I wrote with Lily, it was such a useful foil to, to Lou because the two characters were so different that they butted heads and there's lots of situations that go a bit awry. Um, but essentially, you no. Know, what Lou is able to do is discover what's really going on with this girl, and that was that was nice to write. Are you allowed favourites? Are you allowed favourites? Uh, yeah, of course. I'm God. I get to play God. Of course, <laughs> I'm allowed favourites. Who's um, your favourite? Oh, Lou. I just I I love Lou because the more I've spent time with her, and God, that sounds pretentious. I know she's an imaginary person. I'm just you know, <laughs> she's not. But she's real. There's fine. um. There's a lack of guile and a lack of sharpness to her that I find kind of immensely appealing in a kind of very snarky world. You know, what Lou will never do is snark at someone. I can't imagine her trolling someone on social media because she's just, <laughs> she's just a decent person. But it doesn't mean that she's a walkover either. She has her tipping point and she reaches it with Lily. Um, and, you know, privately I was mm. kind of ready for her to reach a point. Yeah. It'd be pretty hard not to. I yeah, think. yeah. <laughs> Well, anyone who's lived with a teenager knows there is, there is always a tipping point, yeah. Mother and daughter relationships always loom quite large in, in all your books, and there are several mm. in After You. It's, it's, a, it's an ongoing theme, is it? I mean, Ooh. you've got daughters, you are a yeah, daughter. Yeah. I mean, so. um, well, I sort of, the last book I wrote, The One Plus One, um, I really wanted to depict a relationship between a mother and her children that was unproblematic, you know, because I get sick of mothers either being dead or really difficult in fiction, because yeah. um, they're generally either one thing or, or both. the other. Yeah. Or both, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I really wanted to write something that was just entirely uh, about a situation where the mother and the child were not the problem, what was going on outside the family was the problem. And, and it reflected, I thought, what I saw around me, which is mostly children and mothers actually getting on pretty well. You know, everybody has their moments, but for the most part, it's a kind of pretty good relationship, which is not what you see reflected in culture. I want to talk to you a bit about women's stories because we read um, a lot, of, and we talk a lot, actually, about the way women's stories are portrayed in, in media, in books, but particularly in films. But you really excel at writing women's stories. Thank is that you. important to you? Yeah, it's really important. I, you know, I'm unembarrassed about being a feminist. I don't really understand women who say they're not feminist because to me it just means 
trying to be equal, you know, in, in all sorts of senses. And uh, for me, I ask myself, you know, if, say, my daughter or any other 17-year-old girl read this book, what message would they take from it? Is it that, you know, this handbag is going to solve your life? Is it that this man is going to solve your life? No, it's not. I like women who do things, not women who consume things. Um, and I guess in terms of how I portray women, I ask myself, without wanting to sound kind of really pious about it, is it good and would it do good or at least would it not be part of the problem? Because I do think we have a problem and, and what concerns me as a kind of human being and as a parent is I feel like my own daughter and her friends are having to fight battles that I thought we'd won a long time ago. So what, what's coming next, do you think? Uh, I'm off to America for two weeks on Sunday to do a book tour there and then I'm back for a couple of days and doing the Cheltenham Festival if anybody wants to come up there <laughs> and then I'm off to Germany after that and then hopefully I get a break. <laughs> I would really like a rest. I won't bank on that. <laughs> um, yeah so I'll be around from sort of mid-October hopefully um, and then next year I'll start a new book but I think there's probably not much in my head left at the moment. Yeah, that's what um, I was asking yeah, really. Sort of What's the next book? <laughs> uh, no, I, well actually I'm just tidying up a couple of film scripts um, that I've, I've adapted the one plus one and I've adapted a book called Paris for One, um, a little novella f uh, to film length and I'm waiting to hear on a couple of other things which will take me up to the end of this Get year. You. Get me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but most days I look like a sad horse because I'm quite tired, yeah. <laughs> On that note, a really big thank you to Jojo. That was thank amazing. You. Thank you so much.